now joined by the Chief Executive Officer of the uh, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, uh, that's uh, Benga Komalafe. Thank you very much indeed for coming on Newsnight. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you. Gas flaring. Uh, it's been going on since the f 1950s in, in Nigeria, but then it, it wasn't declared illegal until 1984. Uh, speak to us about the, the factors stopping uh, blue chips especially uh, from uh, complying with uh, the regulations around uh, gas flaring? Well, thank you very much. Uh, again, like I said, thank you for having me. Uh, yes, uh, gas flaring indeed in the Nigeria upstream has been going on uh, for some time, but uh, uh, happily enough, the Petroleum Industry Act mm. uh, has uh, offered uh, a solution, provided a solution to prohibiting gas flaring. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, uh, Section 104 of the Petroleum Industry Act 2021 has expressly prohibited uh, the you like to say the menace of gas flaring um, as uh, gas flaring is considered one of the major I mean, pollutants, one of the major ways by which the upstream uh, contributes to the carbonization of the environment. Mm -hmm. So and the provisions, the statutory provisions of the PIA in this respect has indeed offered a lasting solution to the issue of uh, routine uh, that is uh, flaring in the environment. So, and um, besides section 104 of the PI, also section 105 of the same law indeed provides that uh, the flare gas mm -hmm. should be taken over, I mean, by government. That is, and uh, the commission is taking a leading role in this respect. In a manner, I mean, that um, rather than flaring the gas, so it has now become a source of wet to both the investor and uh, mm. be seen as a, a source of revenue to government. That's quite interesting. Yes. Let me put in here. I mean, uh, when you consider the fact that Nigeria, uh, up until date, uh, based on statistics, has continued to lose as much as $680 million uh, per annum to gas flaring. Uh, how much difference really has it made uh, since it became law that gas flaring is no longer acceptable uh, in Nigeria? What really have we, what benefits, what kind of interventions have you come up with, you know, to check gas flaring in, in, you know, in practical terms? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I was just about to go into that. Right. Um, yes, that rather than flaring the gas, um, based on the provisions of the PIA, that is uh, the um, Petroleum Industry Act, and the regulations uh, that the Commission has indeed made uh, to the same uh, effect, to give mm. meaning to the intent of the law in that respect. Like I said, that Section 105 of uh, the PI empowers the Commission as a regulator I mean, uh, of the upstream to actually take over the flared gas on behalf of the government mm -hmm. and uh, convert it to source of revenue. Indeed, as I speak, the Commission has uh, 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 concluded a program where the flared gas uh, I've been taking over and uh, uh, a uh, auctioning process, let me okay. say, has been carried out and the result will soon be announced where the winners will be announced and uh, in what we call Nigerian Gas Commercialization Project. Fantastic. So yes. in the meantime, yeah. gas flaring continues while waiting for this, uh, you know, auction, auctioneering to happen. Is that, is that what you're, you're saying? In the, I mean, in the interim. In the interim, yeah. no. Uh, y or are yes. there any stop gaps, I mean, uh, that you have in place? Yes, the exercise is met in compliance with the provisions of the law right. to actually bring an end to the flaring. 
Yes. So the exercise has been concluded, so we're just waiting to announce the auctioning process to the bidders. And we, what, we, yes. that? we understand that part. Yes. We understand mm -hmm. that part. But yeah. um, Nigeria is one of the top seven gas flaring countries in the world. Two million, I need to let you know this, two million people live less than four kilometers away from a flare site. Mm -hmm. Are you bothered that there's not been any sense of urgency to this? No, really, what I'm saying, of course we are bothered and of course now it's a prescription of the law, like I've said, mm -hmm. that uh, flaring mm -hmm. is prohibited based on the provisions of uh, like I said, section 104 of the law, which we are enforcing as a regulator. So, uh, of course, flaring till I'm talking about mm. attracts penalty that mm. ranges between $2, um, yes, between $2 to $0.05 cents right. you know, per, I mean, 1,000 uh, scoff, mm -hmm. depending on the volume, you know, of, uh, I mean, that is the volume of flared. But the essential thing is that that has now been realized that mm -hmm. the, I mean, that the commission has concluded this program. So any moment from now, winners of the bid will be announced. And once that happens, the nation is going to be realizing, I mean, rather than gas being flared to pollute the environment, mm -hmm. the nation will now realize, be, I mean, it will now be a source of revenue to both right. the investor and uh, the nation. As a All matter right. of fact, if you mm. permit, let me tell you, mm. it is a major climate action project. You understand that is, right. I mean, one major climate action project that Nigeria is seeing, I mean, to be put in on ground as part of our contribution to environment, that, that is decarbonization of the okay. environment as right. uh, the world uh, um, uh, moves towards uh, energy transition. Absolutely. So it's a program that is very dear I mean, to us as a regulator. Fantastic. Yes. And on the flip side, too, let's talk about oil bunkering. Okay. That uh, basket case that refuses to go away. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we hear about collusion on the part of, you know, uh, authorities. I, I use that word deliberately, <laughs> I mean, and advisedly, too, uh, so that I'm not re-echoing uh, what Asari Dokubo said. Maybe it's, I mean, everybody has heard it, might as well uh, say so. But let's talk about what oil bunkering is doing to Nigeria's economy and what you as a regulator uh, are doing, you know, to minimize, if not to totally eradicate, uh, eradicate it. And I'm also worried, uh, you know, about the destruction of an oil-laden uh, vessel uh, recently, you know, as well. We're told by the company that handled, you know, this um, oil uh, vessel's uh, monitoring that uh, it's to send a signal uh, to would-be oil bunkers that it's no longer business as usual. Uh, are there no alternative ways of addressing, you know, checking oil bunkers without necessarily destroying uh, the oil vessels, you know, and uh, further complicating the environmental impact? Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, by oil bunkering, I guess you mean the um, menace of a uh, crude oil theft, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, uh, in the country, mm -hmm. yes. Um, um, oil theft, actually. Oil theft, yes. yes yeah, yes. I sense that is what <laughs> you intend to say, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, unfortunately, the menace of uh, crude oil theft, I mean, uh, the nation has had to grapple with that uh, uh, menace. Uh, and um, uh, what I can say is that on the part of the uh, uh, regulator, uh, we are a technical and commercial regulator. And uh, um, what uh, the issue is being addressed in both, uh, like I said, both kinetic and non-kinetic manner. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, the regulator, I mean, we don't bear arms, and uh, of course, uh, the most we could do in that respect, which we have been doing uh, beautifully uh, well as a regulator, is to co cooperate with the general security forces. And uh, you will notice that, um, I mean, about uh, last year, I mean, that is, uh, I mean, uh, if you look at the volume of, uh, I mean, production is, uh, of course, increasing, increasing. now, yes. Mm -hmm. So that itself signals the fact that the, uh, the positive impact of uh, the effect of uh, uh, the effort that is being made to contain that ugly uh, incident. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, in effect, is that at least 
with the collaboration between the General Security Forces, the Commission, the NPC, and the Private Security Forces, the uh, kinetic aspect of the issue is being, I mean, addressed. And uh, what we could be talking about is the sustainability of that effort. Right. So I believe that with the sustainability of the current effort in trying to curb the menace, that we are going to, the nation is going to reap the dividend of uh, that effort in a manner that is impact on our national production will drastically uh, decrease. Mm -hmm. And we've listened to, uh, I mean, that is President uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu mm -hmm. as equally on assumption of duty mm -hmm. as uh, uh, giving a marching orders to the newly appointed service chiefs as to, to cross his administration. Yes, I mean, his administration's uh, zero tolerance for, I mean, that is for, I mean, incident of cultural theft. So yeah. by implication, we are very much optimistic as a regulator that that kinetic energy that the pace is going to really, I mean, be sustained. Mm -hmm. And um, again, on the non-kinetic side, right. and that is aspect that the commission is really, I mean, uh, equally tackling mm -hmm. very much. Um, uh, on the non-kinetic side, and I mean, we as a regulator, we are embarking on a number of. Um, I mean, that is multilateral measures, at least to complement the effort of the General Security Forces that is uh, in tackling the issue of crude oil theft. Exactly. See, I was yes. actually going to, okay. uh, yes, I was actually coming there because uh, reports say much of this uh, stolen oil is exported uh, to foreign countries or refineries or storage. So what, what do you do? What have you done in, in terms of uh, bilateral and multilateral relationship with other countries to check uh, oil theft in Nigeria. Thank you very much. So I was just trying to, I mean, uh, come. I, mean, I, I saw that you were you were building on it, so I needed I needed to yeah. uh, to give it a direction. Situate. So, yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. So uh, the commission, I can tell you, we are doing a lot in that respect. Uh, only today, and happily enough. Uh, I think I was speaking at a forum organized by HEDA, that is the anti-corruption, I mean the civil society, mm -hmm. and there I unveiled, that is the maiden regulation on, uh, that is crude, I mean that is uh, upstream uh, reg uh, metering regulations, that's the title of the regulations. Uh -huh. In fact, it was a very it's a dramatic shift, a paradigm shift from what we have witnessed as a nation, you know, since um, uh, our experience in uh, oil exploration and production over mm -hmm. six decades ago as a nation. So that regulation, uh, you know, we help a lot in uh, um, improving on uh, transparency of hydrocarbon accounting. Uh, mm. Crude oil losses, you know, apart from the aspects of the ones being done by vendors breaking the line and others, the other aspect is what you have talked about, that we need as a nation to strengthen the transparency of hydrocarbon accounting. We need to be able to have line of sight from the metering, you understand, accounting properly for the volumes we produce, to having line of sight, you know, on the exploitation to the destination. And that is just the aspect we have raised. So for us as a commission, as a Nigeria Upstream Petroleum uh, Regulatory Commission, mm -hmm. We are equally coming up with, uh, if I were uh, awaiting the gazette of the regulation that will be dealing with the advanced cargo declaration. Yeah. So we are waiting just the Nigeria Security uh, our meeting press to release a copy of the gazetted regulation in that respect mm -hmm. for us to uh, begin the implementation. So what that regulation tends to do is to answer the question you have raised. So that by the time we begin to implement the provisions, robust provisions in the regulation, the nation will be able to have line of sight into the volume that is loaded, evacuated from our terminals up to the destination point. But who are so those we'll have the DNA of the vessel, yes. the DNA of the vessel, right. the volume, and all that will be in the database, and uh, there will be um, it will be easy on real time basis to have. I mean, an audit trail of uh, whatever is loaded and whatever is discharged. Does this have yes. to do with the MOCs, the multi, uh, you know, IOCs. Uh, I, yes, the MOCs and IOCs? I mean, the MOCs, we, we've heard they, falsi they falsify 
uh, data and not necessarily transparent as far as the you know gas flaring is concerned. Uh, is that an issue you're tackling at all? How are you addressing that uh, very quickly before we let you go? Thank you very much. Yes, the, of course, the metering regulation, I mean, seeks to address the issue or borders on what I call the transparency of hydrocarbon accounting. Mm -hmm. Both gas and the oil, they are both products of, uh, I mean, hydrocarbon. Mm -hmm. So those two regulations coming into effect, the nation will reap bountifully. I mean, that is the benefit of both regulations and will be able to save I mean, that is, it will save the nation, let me put it, the billions of uh, dollars in terms of uh, revenue when we begin to implement those two billions regulations. Billions of dollars. In, in okay. I wish you could give us some figures. In, you know, so that in we few seconds, what yes. about yes. the metering initiative to curb uh, crude oil theft? Um, yeah. what, how much would that save Nigeria? Okay, just to give you a rough picture. Yeah, a rough idea. Thank you very much. Only last year alone, to crude oil the nation lost about when we fiscalized about 2.2 billion USD. And uh, based on the forensic audit we conducted in the commission, we found out that about 40% of that volume, I mean, that amount, you know. So what about metering that initiative that to That is exactly it. what I'm talking about, yeah, okay. that about 40% of that, I mean, figure, you know, I mean, was attributable to, I mean, metering errors. And that is what the regulation, I mean, All right, we'll have I mean, to leave it there. To kill. Thank you so much. You. Benga Komolafe is the uh, chief executive of the Nigeria Upstream Petroleum Regulatory uh, Commission. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.